welcome back to James's Repair Shop. I hope that fan running in the background is not uh, too noisy for this video. But I've, uh, it's pretty hot in here today. It's plus 35 degrees Celsius. And I need something pretty cool. What I'm doing today, I'm uh, going to switch out this 12-inch this tw uh, 12 tire. It's for the trailer, the little trailer we built. This is a spare tire. Actually, it was a spare. But it's going to be a primary tire. Um, it's a 5.30-12 inch. But this tire here, I've had it on for a long time, and it's got a lot of dry rot in it. And I don't trust it. Plus, it leaks air, probably around the dry rotted areas. So what I've done, I've taken, uh, I already started a little bit, I've taken the, the core of the valve stem right here. Just using one of these little tools, like that. So set aside, don't lose them. And actually, I might change that valve stem if I have a short one. Actually, I'm going to go look for one. So I'll be right back, and I'll see if I have a valve stem before I start. Okay, back again. No valve stem, so I'm going to go with the old one. If it takes to leaking, well, I guess I'll have to break the tire back down and uh, change it. So what I'm using, I've got the bead buster here, my XB455 bead buster. So I'm going to use that on here. And uh, this is probably a perfect spot for it because this is what this is designed for if you go by the instructions on the bead buster. So let's get the tire broke down. So essentially, you see that, push it in, give it a little push inside, and then there's this little holding clamp on there. Three-quarter ratchet, ready to go. Not quite ready, but now it's ready. So crank her up. Just give her a good snugging. Like so. Up tight, and then I, like I said in the video when I presented this, I usually back them off a little bit just to they'll slip over that uh, bead lock. This one doesn't appear to have a, a real big, it's not a bead lock, yeah, it's pressed in it. It's not welded or anything, it's pressed. All right, so there it is, it's on. Let's just crank her down. See if this will yank that off there, no problem. There we go. No issues. There, look at that. Right off with the bead buster. All right, so we'll take the bead buster off and then we'll break the other side down. Sometimes if you get really lucky, once you break one bead, the other side will pop off, but that's a rare occasion. But these little trailer tires haven't been used a lot. They've done more sitting than using. So there's one bead off. Let's flip it over. You may as well put the bead buster on. No sense sweating, it's already hot enough here today. So I gotta return the return the bead buster all the way to the up position, the in position, whatever you want to call it. Give it a little push in, tighten her down. And with these little tires, you can probably almost tighten them by hand and it'll be good enough. But we'll give her a little snug. There we go. That's probably good right there. All right, spin her down. There we go. Ah. Good. Now the beads broke on these. Now, these little tires sometimes can be harder than a big tire. It's they're not made very well. I say they're not made very well. They're just they kind of, here's the new one, and you'll see the bead is, the tire is kind of squinchied around. And sometimes it's hard to set these. Hopefully that's not the issue today. All right, we'll get this off here. We'll set the bead buster aside, return it to its start position. All right, there, set that aside. A little bead buster. I like that. For the size of it, it works pretty darn good. So now, you'll see that if you've ever done these tires, anybody that's done them, this is nothing new. 
you'll see that there's a lip in there on the beads, and that's so you can allow the to get up over it to allow you the tire wrench to get it on the. I'll show you. So you can get the tire wrench in there. See how it's shifted over? Now it sits. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's sitting down inside there. These tire irons. These are a little big for these tires, but we'll get her. There she goes. And just keep working away around. Hold your foot on it if you have to. Helps put a little, uh, not so much taking it off, but it all does help. It's a little soapy water. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go grab my soapy water right now, so I'll bring it back because I'm going to need it anyway. Okay, got my soapy water. And when you're doing tires, soapy water is like personal hygiene. A little bit goes a long way and uh, makes a big difference in your life. So this is just dish soap, a healthy uh, dog, I just use Dawn, that's what we have. And just spray water. And it doesn't hurt to just spray it all because it gives a little more, a little more uh, liquidity on it for slippability. So that's that. So we'll just continue on. Now this tire is pretty much off there on that part of it. So you bring up the next side. And sometimes with these little tires, you can actually just pull them right out. But this one's going to be stubborn. So, all right, no problem. Get under it. Bring it up. So you can get at it like so. I know you can't see that, but maybe there is better. Same deal, just try to get your, your wheel wrenches back in, or tire irons back in so they they grab. Sometimes you can manipulate it with a, like I say, these, these, these tire irons are a little large for this little tire, probably a little screwdriver will work this as well. And a lot of times, once you get them going, they'll rip right off. There she comes. Let's see if we can rip this tire up. Oh, she dropped back down. Anyway, you can also go from the back. If you want. Sometimes that's even easier. Sometimes. Not this time. Now what we'll do one from the back, there's not really a way to hold it so easily. Alright. Let's go back to the way we were. So you had it almost off. It just fell back on. That's a pretty common thing. Alright, got it here again. There she comes. And you can work both sides. Or you can just continue on the side you're doing. There's actually some tire spoons you can get that are a little easier to work with than these things. side of that, right at the bead, usually that's a pretty good spot to get your, your tire iron back in again. some uh, cleaner and clean that rim up and right back. All right, got a bit of cleaner. All I'm using is uh, LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner and it seems to be fine. So while you have it here, you might want to check for rust and pitting and 
And if it's terribly rusty, you're going to want to clean up the clean up the bead area the best you can. There, that's done. Make sure it's cleaned up, pretty decent. No big chunks and crud on there still. It's got a little scouring pad or so, but if it's painted like this one, you don't want to ruin the paint if you can avoid it. Because it's, it's your protection. And I'm just going to clean it. It feels really good even though it looks scruffed, but it feels really nice. There's no like chunks or anything like that on it. Yeah. Nice to clean the whole body of the rim too while you're here. Give it the best start you can start with. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to go with that valve stem. Like I said, if it starts to leak, well, you test them after anyway, so I'll know as soon as I get her on there whether she leaks or not. Alright, that's pretty good for that little rim. There's a little, you can see it or not, it's a little rough right there. A little bit rough. I like where, that's probably where it had been, it flat, got flat and sat at one time. So I'm going to grab a little sandpaper and give that a touch up. Right back. Okay, I got a little piece of 220 sandpaper here. Just going to give this a little touch up. I don't like that bit of rust on there, as you can see. There, get rid of that. I'll check the rest of it. There's any more spots just like that, I'll go after it. But yeah, that's, uh, then clean it again, get the old, uh, Residue off. Any rusty spots that feel feel bumpy, yeah, feel that's a potential for a leak, so you want to get after those. But if the rest is nice and smooth, there's no re reason to go sanding on. It. So just the areas that look rusty or definitely feel rusty. If they feel rusty, that's because they are rusty. Well, that's pretty smooth there now. All right, now putting on the new tire. So this tire happens to be the same on both sides. There's not a new tire, October 08. No, she's not new either. I just bought it brand new at Princess Auto. I think that's at that, yeah, I, put, uh, I think that's the date on this thing. October 14th, 08. Anyway, I'm going to say that. I don't know for sure. I can't see any other markings on it. But anyway, what I'm saying is make sure the tire matches your tire that you already have on the side. Because some of them have letters. Some don't have letters on each side. Some are letters only on one side. Some are white walls. Anyway, so you got it there. So give her a shot of your personal hygiene fluid right here. Soapy water. Like I said, works for personal hygiene as well as tire tires. So then you put it on and a lot of these, like I say, these small tires can almost be harder than a big tire. Just there, they want to be, well for one thing I don't have it held down anything. So get it on there. You can work it on some. And if you can't, that's what these, uh, tools are for. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Really hard to get. These little guys sometimes. So they can be a bugger. Because they're so stiff, and there's not a lot of give in them. Alright. A real tire, a tire man would have that on by now. Alright, let's see if I can start that. Being like this. It might be better.
Do it on both sides. There we go. There she comes. Get that seated in is hard on these ones. So this little lip. Whoops. Try this little lip on there. Roll that around. It might help a little bit. Nope. That's not helping. Wow. All right. That's the game that wants to play. Put the valve core back in the stem. 
and fleet to your specifications that are required. And this tire here, maximum 55 PSI, and that's what I'll run it at. And then I'm going to balance this tire as well, so I'll set it up and show you the balancing process. First, I'm going to put the amount of air in that needs to be in it, and then you'll hit the balancer. Now you've got to find my, find my uh, pressure valve, or pressure uh, gauge. Alright, found the pressure gauge to the the van, because we had it on our camping trip with us. So, we'll go and bring her up to 55 pounds. Right now, it's only at 15, so let's give her, give her the berries here. So these are easily filled with one of those little compressors that you carry in your vehicle. Doesn't take a lot to fill these little guys up. Careful as you're bringing them up because you know there we are. A couple more pounds and should be 55 pounds. There. Have a look. 55 right on the money. I know you can't see that, but that's what I see. All right. That's the tire on the rim. We'll set this stuff aside. Don't need any of this anymore. I'll go over and I'll get the wheel balancer kind of straightened away. I've been uh, working in the shop rearranging things, so it's a bit, it's a bit uh, awkward right here now. Keep working around everything. All right, hang on there. I almost forgot. I mentioned uh, about checking for leaks. So after you mount the tire, before you remount it on your car or take it to get it balanced, you should check for leaks. So again, using the uh, personal hygiene fluid here, and I was worried about that valve stem. So all you're doing is spraying it on areas that could be uh, potential for leak. And there's only three in this, is the valve stem, each side of the bead, unless the tire has been damaged. And, you know, I missed a brand new tire, so I'm pretty confident, but if you're using a used tire, you might want to go over the whole surface and look for fine leaks. So really what you're looking for is spray it on, make sure you get a healthy supply of this uh, personal hygiene fluid. And if the tire and the, if it's leaking around the bead, you'll start to see bubbles, like, uh, like kids bubbles from blowing bubbles. And actually, if you don't have any, if you're on the side of the road and you're camping, you can test it with uh, just that bubble fluid for the kids bubblers. Works just as well. All you're trying to do is create a bubble. So it looks good on that side. I sprayed this side down. You'll see some fine ones. The odd time, wipe them away, see if they come back. If they come back, then it could be problematic. Um, but really, if it's a big leak, you're gonna get, uh, they'll grow. They'll grow fluffy, fluffy out, like, like blowing a bubble in one of those kids' bubble things. Anyway, I think that's good, that one. These aren't growing. So it's just from the uh, spray action, I'd say. Uh, nothing really growing around the bee, uh, around the valve stem that I can see. And if you're not sure, go away like I just did. I'm going to try it again because I am worried about that one a little bit. I think it looks okay. If it's leaking, it's not leaking much. Pull it from side to side, see if any of those bubbles grow. Nope. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to balance this tire, so I'm going to show you what I do there. Uh, all tires, in my mind, should be balanced when I put on a trailer. Cars, doesn't matter if you can do it. I, I understand if you're on the side of the road, you're not going to have that capability, but before you travel too far, you should get it balanced. Blow off the water, any, any great amount of water, so it doesn't interfere with the balancing process. Dry it off of the rag or whatever. 
I took this rim outside and uh, washed it because it was, uh, had caked up mud inside. All right, let me get her on the balancer. I'll right, back to you. All right, set up for the balancer now. So that's pretty straightforward with this uh, rim. Here's the cone. Now I don't know if this will fit, and it will. So that's the right cone for this tire, for this rim, I should say, for the center to, to keep it centered. Get my uh, nut ready here. And I'll put this up. These are pretty light, so they're pretty easy to deal with. And I'll spin that on. Uh, hit that tire thing, plug B, and then it'll. Oh, ho! Now a Randall problem. Big mistake. Big mistake. <laughs> and that's on me. I'm going to show you what I did. This is from store, not storing your tools properly. Look, I hung it over the shaft, this piece here. So in order to get that back off, I would have had to take the wheel back off. This will open up, but that doesn't. So the calipers are good, but the other not. So that's much on me. All right. Let's get her on here. Yep. Making mistakes as you go, you gotta fix them. Sometimes it costs you more time than, than other times. And pull her up a little bit so she doesn't grab on it too much. There she goes. This one's got a brake on it, so I'll put the brake on. Snug it up good. Now I had this plug, oh, I got turned on. That would help. There we go. She turned back on. All right. So I'll grab my caliper. So I'm going to need it to set uh, this setting, B setting on this balancer. So you measure the from the inside of the rim to the inside of the rim. You look at the thing. This is a four and a half. So I'll go down. I don't know. It's at five and a half now. So four and a half. So that's the thickness of the rim, uh, the depth of the rim. All right. That's why I store it on the shaft. Now, this little uh, device here measures the distance out from the machine, and that's what we're setting here. So it says 10 and a half. So we'll go up here to 10 and a half. Just double check. Yep, 10 and a half out. And now I know it's a 12. Uh, a 12 inch tire, so the setting D is uh, the height of the tire, and I know it's a 12 inch rim, that's what you're going off of, it's the, the rim size. So we'll put it back to 12, right there. So now this is set up to do a spin. So with this spinner, you just take it by hand and lights go out, let her go. Good idea to check the trueness of the tire. This one's not too, too bad, it's got a little wow unit they all have a little bit these aren't super high end tires anyway so it's showing half ounce on the inside so you can use the brake stop it with the brake so if i have any p rip weight so half ounce i may have to go to my weight my weight bin i was expecting it to be a lot more than a half an ounce of it. here's one right here it's probably half an ounce that's 0.75. Half ounce is pretty small. Here's a half ounce. Right there. Used one. I'm okay with the used one. So now what you do with this one, you find, there we go. So that right there tells you right above the shaft. And I don't know where my uh, little thing went. Maybe a little hammer here. Alright. Everything's all over the place. There we go. I got a little, little ball peen hammer. So a half ounce right above the shaft and let's see how she how she fared spin her again that's actually not bad the other one I did was out two and a half ounces on the outside well that zero zero now if I remember correctly yeah, you can check to see how much below a half ounce. So this is the minimum that it records. Yeah, so a third 
of an ounce and a third of an ounce on the inside and inside. Now, if your fall wanted to go crazy, you could you could put another little bit on there. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Could always add. Uh, I could always add a 75. Let's try. Uh, no, we'll leave it because they're both equal. So a third of an ounce, third of an ounce. That's well within specs. Good. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And I mentioned that none of these these are lit up, so that means it's for these types of rims. If you have, uh, if you want static, so it only measured the up and down. Um, this is in dynamic for steel rims, so it measures both up and down and side to side motion. And then these up, that's the static is just for one way, and then the aluminum one, aluminum two, aluminum three, so different types of aluminum rims. But that's it. That wheel is ready to go on the trailer. And uh, man, I'm sweating because it is hot in here today. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and watching me change a tire. Something very simple.